Here we have a Samsung R70 laptop which has a fault as can be seen on the screen so what I'm going to do I'm going to attempt to reflow the circuit board and see if we can get the R70 back up and running so here we go it's all come about through health and safety they have now stopped using lead in solder this is a common problem on electronic equipment today the solder breaks down after a short period of time we get this problem where the chip loses contact with the board and its surrounding components and we get a break up of the picture so what I'm going to do I'm going to try and reflow the circuit board or particularly the uh, graphics chip okay so the basic tools is just a small Phillips screwdriver and maybe a flat screwdriver I'm just going to use a, a blow heater on the circuit board so first job is let's dismantle the computer okay the first thing we need to do is disconnect the computer from any power supply we've disconnected from the mains so we now need to disconnect the battery so there we go battery removed now when we get to anything to do with circuit boards we need to make sure that there's no static on our bodies and we can do that by touching the radiator so if I touch the radiator especially the metal work it will ground me which I've now done <coughs> now any electrical components such as the memory uh, the RAM the hard drive I'm going to put in an anti-static bag plastic bag you could ever buy these from any electronic store so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the memory from the computer okay I've just grounded myself so <coughs> I'm going to start by removing the RAM side clamps and just pull the RAM try not to touch anything hold it on its side and drop drop it in to your anti-static bag this computer has two lots of RAM so I'll remove the lower RAM and drop that into anti-static bag three wires on here so we need to remove these wires first of all I need a little flat screwdriver and there we go these just flick off we've got white grey and black ok so I've made a, a drawing of the wires which is white, grey and black, white one, grey three, black two so that's just for my benefit, it might vary from computer to computer but anyway, so what I need to do, ground myself before I touch a component, which I've done now I'm going to remove this circuit here again now it's held in with screw, so first of all we need to remove one screw there we go, screw, take that out this is the Wi-Fi circuit. Drop it in the container. So that circuit should now come out. There we go. And then again I need to drop it in my anti-static. Drop it in the anti-static bag. So that's out of the way. So the next job is to remove the hard drive. Which is... Yeah. Hard drive again. Just remove the screws. Remove the screws. There we go, screws removed. Now, remove the screws, remove, remove the, the cover to reveal the hard drive. Now we need to remove the hard drive. All the screws, I've got to remove the thing, but I'll just myself first, which I've now done. So now we need to remove the hard drive. Again, just pull it this way, it should come out. There we go, that's the hard drive. Now, again, I've got a static bag, a static bag to put the hard drive in. Uh, I'll not bore you with checking all these screws out, so I'll just stop the camera. I've now removed all 27 screws. <laughs> it's amazing how many screws they have in these laptops. Okay, and there's one screw to remove, which is the one that holds the digital drive, and it's this little fella. So I'm going to remove that now, and then we should be able to remove the drive. Okay, so I'll get that screw out. Screw out, drop the screw in me, little pot. So that's 28 screws now, we should be able to remove the digital drive, and there you are. So we've now removed the drive. Remove the drive, the digital drive, put that in a safe place. And we can start on trying to remove the keyboard. So I need to 
Turn the computer over. There's a little latch there. There's also a latch in the centre and there's a latch somewhere over here. We'll start with this latch and we need to just flick. Okay, so I've managed to do it. We'll lift this up. Be careful, there's a ribbon here. Flick that up and the ribbon will come out. Little catch there, lift that up. The ribbon comes out and the keyboard lifts free. Oh, hooray. Keyboard's out. So we should be able to start removing this part of the computer. So, first of all, we need to remove this. Again, it's a flick out job. There we go, that's removed. So we're going to remove the screen now. And the screen's removed. It's just... Oh no, we're not going to remove the screen. We need to unplug the screen first of all. So, do the white, black and grey wires. So, yes, we need to remove these. So, just take these wires out. They run down a channel. So, there we go. White, white wire up. Save it. Grey and black wire. Remove them. Wait, wait, a bit tricky. There we go, that's out. Just the black wire. Need to remove them from the channels. So they're free now to come away with the screen. Next thing we've got two plugins from the screen. This one, little fellow. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay, so now we're going to remove the screen. So we need to remove the hinges from the screen to start with. So there's two screws on the hinge. One screw on each hinge. So I'll remove these. You should remember those, the chrome in colour. The same as the hinge. I'll just drop that in with the rest of the screws. And we have one on the other side, somewhere. Oh, there it is, behind that wire. There we go, the one here. Remove the screw. Okay, so that's that removed. So we're now ready to try and remove the screen. Need to be careful with this, I don't want to damage it. It should. Lift off, there we go, come off easy. We need to put this in a safe place. So I'm going to put it on my chair there. Looks like there's a couple of other things to disconnect. Uh, there we go. See if we can zoom in. Okay, won't focus. Zoom out a bit. Uh, a couple of other things there to take out. And it says speaker. So it's speakers are black and white and red and black wires. You need to just flick them out. Be careful. Thomas. That's out. And the other one's a microphone connection. See if we can get that out without damaging things. We've got long nails so it helps. There we go. So that's everything disconnected. So we can pull the case apart now, hopefully. So I'm going to try to turn the case over and see if we can separate it. I'll just turn the computer, the video off for a minute until I get myself set up. Okay, so we're going to try and pull this apart. Let's go too wide. We're going to try and pull this apart. Now all the inputs are on this side of the laptop. So that means, possibly, that the cases are going to separate from the opposite side and possibly pull that way but what I need to do is check to see I've got all the screws I've got 27 screws out and I have actually found another screw which was hidden underneath where the digital drive was so we have a little screw hidden right there I'll take that screw out and hopefully it should come apart I'll remove that screw. You've got to look around because they do have these hidden screws on these laptops. In fact, on all electrical gear. Got that in my uh, toolbox. Okay, hopefully, like I said, it should come away, maybe come that way. So, and we're going to go at separation, separating it from this side. I guess it's come apart. Like I said, it'll probably come apart from. There we go. Okay, so we're into the the main parts of the board. Oh. Got a little thing here. I can see where it's come from, it's come off there. It's the microphone, so that must probably go in the case. We'll put that in when we finish, so I'll just drop that in with the screws. So this is ready to see. It looks like the screws are numbered. So we've got number one there, number one, number three, number two, and I don't know how many, so we'll start with one, two and three. The screwdriver is better. Okay, number one. Removed. Number two. Remove. 
don't forget to always ground yourself so what I do, especially when I get to this stage, is I touch the radiator which is behind me. Touch the radiator, it grounds any static electric that might be in my body. Can you see any more? I can't see any more. Three screws, let's just fill this. Okay, yeah, that's it, just three screws. Now the board should lift this way because all the, the wheel should lift that way because all the connections are on that side, all the connections are on this side, so we get hold of the board and gently pull it towards me, it should, with a bit of luck, come away. But it doesn't want to, don't know why. And there we go. So, the motherboard is out. We've still got a connection, but you don't know what that is. And it's the, uh, the what's it connection. Take that out, remember where it goes when I put it back. So, we have a look. Have a look and get this into view. Have a look around there, that says, says graphics. So the chip that's possibly causing the problem on this board is underneath this heat sink. So what I need to do is remove the fan and heat sink. So here we go. Let's have a look. First of all, we need to unplug the fan. Unplug the fan and unscrew it. I can see this one, two, three, four, six screws. So let's start removing them. One. Never lock tight on it, so that's why that screw is tight, especially being near where there's any heat. The lock tight builds hard. Right, so four more screws. I need a spring loaded by the looks of it. So let's get these up and then the fan, the fan should come away. I think these screws remain on, on the heat sink because they're not spring loaded. Right, so I'll screw a bit of time because I'm going to unscrew it. Okay, I think that's it clear. Yep, there we go. So, there you go, the fan to remove. Put that somewhere safe. Now, what you will need after I've finished the surgery, or surgery on this board is some new heat compound. So, I would advise. If you've not got any, so go and get some heat compound. So right, next job is to wrap this board in tin foil. Okay. So before I do anything, I'm just going to have a look at the fan because this can be full of dust. It's meant to block the dust, so we need to clean all that out and get the vacuum cleaner on it and give it a suck out. Who knows? Right. So that's a job for later. The next job is the motherboard and onto encasing tinfoil. Okay, so I've brought the circuit board into the kitchen. <coughs> Two reasons I explained as we go along. First of all, I've got the wife's kitchen foil. I'm going to wrap the circuit board in foil. Another good point is I'm next to the sink, so I can touch the sink to ground myself and make sure there's no static in my body, which I'm going to do now because I'm going to start messing. I'm grounded. So now we're going to wrap the circuit board in turn foil. I'll explain why in a minute. Okay, so there we go. Put the board like that. I'm going to put so I can identify the chip. If we look here, we've got this place where the fan went, and the chip I want to get to is this one. This is the graphics chip, right? So. We've identified where it is, so I'm going to turn the circuit board over, so it'll be nearest to me now. Turn it over, like so. And now I'm going to start wrapping the... It's like cooking a chicken. Okay, so I'll wrap the circuit board like that. Bring the file over, like so. Okay, so now I'm going to... Okay. I've uh, make sure I ground myself again. Right, so this is the thing. I'm going to sellotape it up. That was a problem. Can't find the start of the sellotape. Well, there it is. Okay, so we need to make sure it's sealed.
Keep the rest of the road while that's like it. That's where the plan was, and the chip I'm interested in, the graphics chip, is there. So if I run my nail round, I should be able to expose it. That's up. Run my nail round. Now I've got a nail. Now I'll get the wife to do it. Now I've got nails. If I play the guitar. Now. So there we go. Peel that off, and that should reveal the chip. Okay, I'll just zoom in and let you see. So this is the chip I'm going to apply it to. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it on top of my oven because the oven is designed to take heat. It's a ceramic top. So here I have the oven. The oven's switched off. I'm not using the oven. So again, touch something metal before I handle the door. So I'm going to put this on the oven top and I'm going to apply I'm not cooking my breakfast I'm cooking the chips <laughs> the wife said I can't cook chips I'll prove her wrong right so there we go that's all set up now all we need is some heat but what I'm going to do I'm going to see if I can find anyway I'm going to see if I can find some something that I can put in and around the chip to keep the heat off the rest of the board. So I'm just going to have a root round, I'll come back and see what I've found before we apply any heat. Okay, so I've found some industrial heat sinks, industrial padlocks. They're quite heavy, so I'm going to place one on either side of the chip. Be nice to have had something to go the other side, but I'll settle for that. And now with the heat gun. Now I reckon about two minutes at about nine, eight, between eight and ten inches from the board. So I'll plug the heater in and start. Right, so. Okay, so we've got the heat gun here. We'll about 10 inches. Put the door right over where we want to be. So I'm going to have to come over here and do it. So this is going to run for two minutes over the chip. I'd say about eight or nine inches. This is actually a paint stripper, so it's quite hot. So eight or nine inches is quite good enough. So I'll do this now for two minutes. I'll stop the video while uh, we're doing this because there's no point watching. That's two minutes of cooking the chip. Don't tell the wife I can cook chips. Well, that's what I've done. I'm going to let that stand and let it cool. Be careful when you pick. I've got to be careful when I pick these up. They're really hot. They're yeah, too hot to handle. So I need to pick them up with oven gloves. Right, so while well, that's going in there, I'll put the heat gun away, find the oven gloves, so I can remove them heat sinks, let that go for a couple of minutes, two or three minutes. Put the oven, back, put the oven gloves back before the wife knows, I can touch the board. So what you need to get is some compound, heat compound, it's not expensive, you've got to get the local electronic shop, I've got this from Maplin's, you do it, put some heat compound on the chips, that is required. So I'm going to put some on. This is before we put the heat sink back. Okay, so I'm going to apply some heat, heat compound to the chips. There we go. There we go. Heat compound on. Put the nozzle back on the compound in case I need to use it again. It's not dried up on me. There we go. So I'm now ready to put. Okay, well I've uh, vacuumed the fan and cleaned the fan. So. Now we can assemble it again, but just to be safe, I ground myself on the radiator. Just move the camera in a minute so you can see where I'm up to. Camera wants to be dipped a little bit. Okay, see that now. So I place the heat sink back over the chips, and now I can start replacing the screws. 
I'm going to start with the four sprung screws. Okay, screw them down. And I'm looking for four, two short screws. The circuit board itself. That's the best. That's all I'm asking. So this one is from the way down the bottom. I'm going to this keeps the pressure. I'm going to take it out so we can find the screw. You can do it in that screw down because it keeps the pressure. Everything's tight. Put the fan plug, plug the fan back in the board. Right. Looks like there could be another screw until it actually goes back in its casing. Right, so we can now put this back into the case. There's a wire which plugs in the board from the case. But we'll do that. When we get the board back in, there's a bit of dust in here, so I'm going to get the dust in. Press it down the fan area. Okay, that's right. Move the dust. Because because I've been rubbing on this, this piece of plastic, the chance I might have static in my body, so I'm going to ground myself again to get rid of any possible static. All the components outputs are on this side of the board, and the heat shrink was side, that side down. So it's going to go back this way, if you can see. It should go back in to this. Okay, there it goes. That's back on. So, one, two, three screws to put in. Before I do that, I think I'll just plug this in while I remember. I'm going to get this top part back on. And it's clicked together nicely. Didn't even have to try. Okay, that's clicked together, okay. What I need to do is put the speaker wire back and the microphone wire back and the mouse wire back. Right, so speaker wire back first. They are marked on the board what's what. So, speaker to go in first. That's gone in. Clicking. Microphone. Okay, so microphone and the speaker wires are back. But we've now got to get this back which is the mouse so to do that I need to lift up there's a little flap on the board you lift it up with my nails I can do it you've not got nails you to use tweezers or something so make sure that's on I can feel it's gone in then shove down the cap the latch until it clicks there we go no, that's it Okay, that's in, hopefully. We'll know if the mouse doesn't work. We'll have to deassemble, but up to now, that looks to be okay. So the next job is putting the screen, the screen back on. So, I need to grab the screen. Um, so, I've put the screen just over on the other side there, where it's safe. I'll go and grab the screen. So, screen's going back on. Make sure all the wires are this side. And place the hinges back into places. There they are. Two chrome screws. I remember that. One screw. See? Just hold that so we get the line as well. There we go. Once you've got one screw, it's not so bad. That's one screw. Next screw. Okay, the hinges are secure. I'll give you the other screws out. Okay, so that's securely on. I'll swing the camera back round where I had it before now. Cause... Right, I need to feed these wires back to the way they came. First of all, this is the display plug. I'll put that back in. So just shove it on. Make sure it's on. That's on nicely. The next thing is I've got to reroute these wires. I've now replaced all the screws except for three. The two are for the keyboard, which you've got to go back in, and the centre one is for the digital drive, which I'm going to now replace. And this only has one screw, and it goes in there. That way, I think. That's great way. So shove that in until you see. There we are, in line with the screw. Looks like it's a shortest screw. No, I'm not done by guessing for the screws. I hope this is the one. Actually, uh, 
Take your two drive back. So now we're back to putting some components back in. So it's actually it's the wireless Wi-Fi link. And there's a screw, and I know it's a sharp screw. Screw that on. That's the correct screw. Right, now then. I made a drawing of where the wires just chipped me dry. Right, so white goes to number one. So these are actually numbered. One, two, one, three, two. So white goes to number one. These are little plugs, they just clip on. Put it over and press it down with the screwdriver. That's gone on. And then number three is grey. That's gone on. And last but not least, number two is black. Okay, so them wires are all in place. Shove them back in under the compartment cover so they're not going to get trapped. That's fine. Happy with that. Right, so next thing is to reinstall the RAM. Again, to be careful, I've just drowned myself on the radiator before I handle these and I've kept them in an anti static bag. Hopefully, they should be okay. So, one at a time. Try to grip it on the edge. There we go. So this is going to go in the bottom of the two locations. One of them is in. Place. Top of it. The top of it. Click on its edges. Now see if we can get this in. A bit easier than the last one. Okay, there we go. And that one's going to be nice and easy. That looks to be okay. So now I can put the cover wherever it is. Right now. There it is. Put this cover back. Okay, that's it. Then we go back. Now we're going to reinstall the hard drive. So, again, that's kept in there. Kept in there. Static proof bag. It's got a case which is already screwed up. So, we're going to get this in one piece. That's the way it goes in. And into it. We're going to just take some putting up. And I have a device. Yes, that's enough. Yeah, screw it in. Just hand it over there. Yeah, so we'll just do that. Get the nails and put it in the right hand side of the way there. Right, so, I'll just put the panel over Anyway, we need to get the keyboard back. So, just back over there. Hold me up. And now, it's the installation of the keyboard. Coming in. Is I've got to get the ribbon. Let me show you the ribbon. It actually, has a ribbon feed for the keyboard and the mouse, but the mouse is in, so we're alright. I've done the mouse, it's just a given. So, here we have a little flap. I'll lift that up and we should be able to slide the keyboard wire cable, ribbon cable, into its location. It's hard to get this on camera. You're gonna have to trust me that I'm doing it. Trickier than it looks, especially if the light's fading. Right, that's gone in nicely. It feels like it's gone on square, so I'll push the... Right now. That's it. Right. The light's there. Press the locking cap down, which I have done. So that's it locked down. The ribbon feed is back in place from the keyboard. Now the keyboard, if I remember, went in that way first. And then it kind of just flicks on the button here. It in. It's three places it clicks in. That's the keyboard in, refitted. Okay, all back together. So, is it going to go up in smoke or will it work? Knowing my luck, it'll go up in smoke. So, I'm going to press. I'm going to press the on button. And see what happens. And then I'll put the uh, I'll put the power lead in. Okay, there we go. Press the button. So there it goes. Will it or won't it? Oops, we have got that. Whee! So at least we've got rid of the.
problems on the screen. What I need to test now is whether everything functions. There we go. Yay. Welcome, welcome. Right, so first of all I need to test. We can hear the speakers are working. Is the mouse working? Okay, the mouse is working, so up and running. So what I need to do now is put it on a long test because a lot of the problems are caused by heat. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it in defrag and that will let it run for a few hours while it's doing a job and come back in a couple of hours and see whether everything's still working. But looking good so far so there we go easy give it a go save yourself some money